Hello, bookworm. I am ecstatic about this video because today I get to share with you the best of the best, the creme de la creme of my 2023 reads. Last year proved an exceptionally good reading year for me, and I subsequently have 11 books to share with you. 11 books that will escort you from glittering dark forests to the furthest reaches of space. Books that will make you laugh or rend your heart. Books with characters you'll hope never to see again, and others you'll wish could stay with you forever. The book that ranks number one on this list took me completely by surprise and knocked into second place a book I was certain would be my number one read of the year. I can't wait to tell you about it and the rest of these marvelous books, so let's get started. Beginning with The King of Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany, a work of classic fantasy that inspired many authors of fantasy and science fiction, including including H.P. Lovecraft, Gene Wolfe, and Michael Moorcock, among others. It's even rumored that this book inspired Tolkien. And when I tell you what it's about, I think you'll understand why. The book opens on a darkening valley where a young man named Alvaric is on his way to a cottage on the high heaths where there lives a witch. He needs her help in crafting a sword that can parry the unearthly dangers found in Elfland, where he'll soon journey to wed the King of Elfland's daughter, Lyrazel. After Lyrazel leaves Elfland behind and marries the mortal man, Alvaric, she finds herself torn between returning to her homeland to live forever among her people or remaining among humans with her husband and son, where she's doomed to die a mortal death. Sound familiar? This is the story of a woman grappling with her identity and wrestling with a decision that has monumental consequences. But it's also a fun story about a young man evading trolls and hunting unicorns, and a witch who gathers thunderbolts from the sky, merges them into runes, and uses them to craft weapons. It's a well-balanced, incredible tale about the perils of bringing magic into the real world, and it's written in a gorgeous poetic style. If you're a fan of Tolkien, or you want to get lost in a strange woodland where the air is luminous, the vines are sentient, and in the distance there glitter the towers of an elf king's palace, be sure to check this one out. Next up is Orbital by Samantha Harvey, a slender, unassuming book that punctuated my year-end reading with a profound exclamation point. It records just one day in the life of six astronauts who are orbiting the Earth. We glimpse their daily routine, which includes floating in gravity-free sleep and eating dehydrated meals, but we're also afforded gorgeous descriptions of the view outside their window. I'm talking about breathtaking imagery of planet Earth's terrain and its skies, its oceans sparkling in the sunlight, or its cities illuminated with glittering lights after dark clouds gathering in ominous storms or billowing in soft blue skies, the land adorned in varying hues as the sun rises and sets, or the aurora borealis glimmering in the heavens after dark. Interspersed throughout these gorgeous descriptions, we're granted glimpses into the personal lives of these six astronauts, and these small, Quiet moments are beautifully juxtaposed against the grand, larger-than-life observations made about planet Earth. I love how this book lifted me to the stars and asked that I pause to appreciate the vast beauty of this planet we all share, and how it then pulled me in close and asked that I observe that every life on this planet is complex and precious. In short, Orbital is lyrical, meditative, and introspective. If you're in the mood for a starlit elegy to our wondrous planet Earth, one that begs to be read slowly, this is the book for you. Moving on to an unexpected addition to the list, we have Spare by Prince Harry. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering, is she really going to talk about Prince Harry's memoir in this video? The answer is yes, but I promise I'll make this quick. Let it be known that I am not a royalist. Curiosity compelled me to listen to the audiobook read by Prince Harry, and to my immense surprise, his ghostwriter, J.R. Moringer, crafted such an exquisite narrative that I was moved to tears. All I want to say about this book is that if you've lost someone and are haunted by their absence, or if you are the odd one out in your family who sought professional help and afterward, didn't know how you fit back into your family, then 
Like me, you are poised to find this book moving and relatable. If you're curious about this book but still have reservations about reading it, then I highly recommend watching Lena Norm's video on the full book. I'll link to it in the description box. If you're looking for an irreverently funny book, look no further than Mother Thing by Ainsley Hogarth. This is the story of a woman named Abby who hopes to start a family with her husband, Ralph. The only problem is Ralph's deceased mother resides in their basement and she is terrorizing Abby, forcing the couple to grow farther and farther apart. The writing in this book is so surprising and sharp. One moment Hogarth had me laughing about a fart and the next moment I was marveling at a masterfully crafted sentence. Within this book's pages, there can be found wry humor, caustic wit, gruesome horror, and a few unexpected twists. I really appreciate how this book offers a complex and dark yet humorous look at motherhood and the many forms it takes. When I was preparing for a 15 hour flight from Singapore to San Francisco, I packed three books to keep me entertained. I started with this one and its opening pages were so riveting that it became my sole source of entertainment throughout the flight. I will be the first one to admit that this book is an acquired taste. That said, if you enjoy Mona Awad's books or literary horror, or you like books that conclude and leave you dizzy with shock, then be sure to check this one out. Just thinking about this next book makes my heart ache. The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff is historical fiction that opens with a servant girl in a low drawn hood, slipping through a slit in a palisade. Though her small body is frail with starvation and the wind is spitting icy snow at angles, she sets off into the dark of night, running for her life because the perils that lie ahead of her are nothing compared to what she's leaving behind. Thus begins her journey through the wild dark woods in what is undoubtedly the most sensory experience of my 2023 reading journey. Not only was I invested in this girl and her perseverance through increasingly difficult circumstances, but I also marveled at how every single sentence is masterfully crafted. I was so enraptured by Groff's writing style that I am now making my way through her complete works in the order that they were published. This book oscillates between the girl's present and past. We journey alongside her through the woods, bearing witness to the inventive, sometimes terrible things she does in the name of survival, but we're also made privy to her life before she escaped when she lived in a colonial settlement where food was scarce, men were corrupt, and many people had succumbed to a plague. If you enjoy harrowing stories with lush descriptions of the natural world, then be sure to check this one out. And before I move on to the next book, I want to add that if you've already read The Vaster Wilds and loved it, then I urge you to read Golden Line by Jimmy Cajolis for a similarly transportive read about traversing a perilous forest. We are now nearing the midpoint of this list of books, and I'd love to know if you've read any of the books mentioned so far. If you have, please share your spoiler free thoughts with me in the comments. Next up is Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes, which alternates between the perspective of Perseus on his quest to fetch the head of a Gorgon and young Medusa growing up among her immortal Gorgon sisters. But we also uh, jump occasionally to the perspectives of other figures from Greek mythology as well. Many people are already familiar with the legendary myth of the monstrous snake-haired Medusa and the hero who triumphantly battled her. But this book aims to give a broader understanding of the original story by painting a more sympathetic portrait of Medusa. It also compels readers to scrutinize the people recording historic events and to question the verisimilitude of their records. The truth is, I read the opening pages of this book and I almost skipped it, but then I decided to give the audiobook a try and I am so glad I did. It's narrated by the author Natalie Haynes, and she brings such life to the characters and humor to the dialogue that I was instantly hooked. If you are in the mood for a sentimental, nuanced retelling of Greek mythology that has a dash of humor, then this is the book for you. Moving on to The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff, also known as the darkly comedic feminist thriller that we all know should have been on the 2023 Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist. This follows a woman named Gita, whose abusive husband walked out on her five years ago, 
Yet everyone in her remote village in India believes that she killed him. Because it benefits her as a woman living alone, Gita leans into this rumor and keeps the truth to herself. That decision serves her well until other women in the village start consulting her as a husband disposal expert, meaning they want Gita's help with killing their own no-good husbands. There is tension in this book, and tenderness, and some surprising twists. It covers complicated friendships, dark sisterhood, and misogyny, as well as the way women living in a patriarchal world are sometimes drawn together resentfully by their common experiences. This is such a propulsive and readable book that I flew through it. When I read the last page, I had a massive smile on my face because the ending and the final line are oh so satisfying. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but this book was a debut. Like, imagine coming right out the gate and writing a book this good and being nominated for the Women's Prize for Fiction. Like, incredible. If you haven't read this book yet, then you are in luck because an arresting thriller awaits you. And if you have read this book, then you can join me in eagerly anticipating whatever this author publishes next. This next book hardly needs an introduction, Demon Copperhead by Barbara King Solver, which takes a look at institutionalized poverty and the opioid epidemic in America. Now, this book has already gotten lots of attention because it won the 2023 Women's Prize for Fiction as well as the Pulitzer Prize, so I'm going to keep this one brief. Demon Copperhead is about a boy living in the mountains of southern Appalachia, where he must navigate the foster care system, disastrous first love, and drug addiction, among other things. You wouldn't think a book about those subjects would be funny, and yet, no book I read in 2023 made me laugh out loud more times than Demon Copperhead. Adding a layer of complexity to this book is the fact that it's a contemporary retelling of David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. Now, I've been asked if a person can enjoy Demon Copperhead if they haven't read David Copperfield, and as someone who has not yet read David Copperfield, my answer is a resounding yes. I also found a video of Barbara Kingsolver in which she says the same thing. You need to have read David Copperfield to enjoy Demon Copperhead. She also offers some intriguing insights on how she took Dickens' characters and reinvented them for this book, so I'll link to that in the description box if you'd like to watch it. As a matter of fact, I'm really glad that I haven't read David Copperfield yet because I'm already looking forward to when I can revisit this beautiful book, and when that day comes, I would like to first read David Copperfield so I can then reread King Solver's book with a new perspective. Why did I read so many heavy books this year? If somehow you still haven't read this book, then I highly recommend listening to the audiobook because it's told in the first person perspective and hearing Demon's accent and the rhythm of his speech will absolutely enhance your reading experience. Has this video prompted you to add any books to your TBR? If yes, please tell me which ones and make sure you leave room on your TBR for these next three books because you're not gonna wanna miss any of them. Project Hail Mary by Andy Ware is science fiction at its finest. I am going to do you a favor and not tell you anything about this book. I went into it not knowing a thing about it, and you should too. Listen, some books like Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, for example, are best approached blind, and Project Hail Mary is one of those books. Do not read the book blurb. Do not read any reviews on this book. Just pick it up and start reading. Or better yet, listen to the audiobook. Let yourself discern what the heck is happening in this book right alongside its perplexed protagonist. I will say this much. Project Hail Mary is heartful and funny, perilous and compelling. And when I finished the book, I didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. So I did both. Recommending this book to other people and hearing how much they loved it has been one of the highlights of my year. And now I get to bestow that gift unto you. Just do yourself a favor and go listen to this book. Let's see if I can talk about All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr without crying. <laughs> this entire book is composed of beautifully written short chapters that keep readers at a constant cliff's edge. And when I finish reading it, just to say that this book wrecked me is a massive understatement. When I finished reading this book, I had tears streaming down my cheeks. 
The story is set primarily between the years 1934 and 1944, and it follows a blind teenage girl in Nazi-occupied France who's making illegal radio broadcasts and a brilliant German boy who is enlisted by the Nazis to track down the girl and stop her from making broadcasts. I've seen some reviewers call this book World War II Light, and I confess there were times when I felt that way myself. It occurred to me while reading that Doerr is so subtle and nuanced in the ways that he alludes to the worst atrocities of the Holocaust, that if someone reading the book didn't already know about the war, they would not get the full picture. But by the end of the book, Doerr successfully conveys that war is ugly and horrific. And his characters are so well drawn, so full of heart and conviction that you can't help but fall in love with them and worry about them as they navigate this cruel war. It's rare that a book moves me to tears, but this one did multiple times. It's rare that a book compels me to object to what's happening in its pages, but this one drew audible protestations from my mouth. And it's rare that a book makes me so uncomfortable and angry that I can hardly bear to read another page, but this one did. Do not be like me and let this incredible book sit on your shelves unread for years. Go read it now. Nothing I've read has better exemplified that when we actively choose to destroy others, we inadvertently destroy ourselves. And given everything that has happened in the world this past year, I can think of no greater topical message than that. When I finished reading All the Light We Cannot See, I actually said aloud that I would not find a better book before the end of the year, but I was so wrong. Enter The Summer That Melted Everything by Tiffany McDaniel, my number one read of 2023. The story takes place in Ohio in 1984 amid a heat wave. The father of a boy named Fielding Bliss publishes in the local paper an invitation to the devil. And before long, a 13-year-old boy arrives claiming he is the Prince of Darkness. Now, needless to say, the townspeople are troubled by his presence, especially given that strange things start happening after his arrival. McDaniels writes about Fielding's summer with this boy devil with gorgeous prose and stunning moments of quiet reflection, on top of which the characters are deeply flawed and the atmosphere is so thick. And I mean that in the dual sense that we are constantly reminded of the scorching summer heat, the dripping sweat and sticky discomfort. But we're also constantly on a razor's edge. The mounting tension in this book is unrelenting. Couple that with all of the strange happenstance and subtle uncertainty and the clever ways that McDaniels had me constantly questioning what is fact and what is fiction, what is happening and what is going to happen. And the result is a book that held me like a moth to a flame. When I tell you that the ending is explosive, when I tell you that there were times I wanted to look away, but I couldn't, when I tell you that this book held me fast and would not let me go, I mean it in a way that I never have before. By the time I finished this book, I was breathless and shaken and I really, really needed a hug. Not since Shirley Jackson's the Lottery has a work of fiction's plausibility unsettled me to this degree, which is to say that if you are a fan of Shirley Jackson or if it's been a while since a book has shaken the ground beneath your feet, then you absolutely must read The Summer That Melted Everything. I've just shared with you my top reads of 2023, and now it's your turn. Please tell me what books were the highlights of your reading last year. Also, based on the books I shared in today's video, if you have any recommendations for me, please tell me in the comments what they are. Your code word for the comments for watching to the end of the video will be melted in honor of this absolutely stunning book. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Hannah Greendale. I wish you happy reading and I'll see you in the next one.